Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable Tribunal, Mrs. Batokabe and children, friends of Representative Batokabe, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I am deeply grateful for being invited to speak in this program in memory of Representative Rodel M. Batokabe. He was a good man and a faithful public servant whose life, so full of promise, was cut down before its time. The good die young indeed. Rodel Batokabe was in my class in political law review at the University of the Philippines College of Law in the academic year 1990 to 1991. I did not come to know him as well as I should had he been a freshman concerned as I was then with helping students prepare for the coming bar examinations. I had lost track of Rodel after his graduation in 1991 until one day in July 2012, I received a call from him after introducing himself as a former student he asked whether he could see me about a legal problem. Earlier that day, I had caught him briefly on television denouncing a decision of the Commission on Elections. And so I said, come over, let's see wondering what it was that was causing him so much distress. <coughs> Rodel Batokabe had been a party list representative belonging to the Ako Bicol, which the Comelec had disqualified from participating in the 2013 elections. The Comelec had found that the Ako Bicol was not a sectoral, but a regional party, merely duplicating functions already performed by district representatives. Rodile denied this, and his group denied it too. And they claimed that they were representing underrepresented and marginalized sectors of the Bicol region. After studying the case and considering it was the request of a former student, I agreed to take the case. We litigated the case for several months in the Supreme Court on April 3, 2013. The court rendered its decision reversing the Comelec decision and ordering the ACO Bicol to be included in the ballot for the 2013 elections. <coughs> the ACO Bicol won two seats in the elections and Rodel went on to serve a second term. In the succeeding elections in 2013, the Ako Bicol won three seats, and again, Rodel got a seat to serve a third term. It is tempting to speculate by the, whether the Ako Bicol won only two seats in 2013 because somehow it was dis, it's distracted from its campaign. Anyway, <clears throat> having served the maximum number of terms in the House, 
Rudel was barred from seeking another term. So he decided, not without consulting, I may assume, his constituency to run for the mayor of his hometown. But sadly, sadly, that was not going to be his fate. Just as Holmes once said, when a great tree falls, we are surprised to see how meager the landscape seems without it. So when a good man dies, this memorial program, therefore, serves as the occasion for remembering Rodel M. Batokabe, both as a public servant and as a private person. The Supreme Court, in the case filed by the Akko Bicol, which listed several other party list cases, ruled that party list which do not represent any of the marginalized and underrepresented sectors mentioned in the Constitution or in the law, may represent ideological and party cause sectors or parties and qualify for the elections. Rodel imbibe the lesson of that case. He became president of the Party List Coalition Foundation and the Accord Bicol. He filed a bill, House Bill Number 134, to strengthen the Party List system. He had become an eloquent advocate of the Party List system. I have scanned Rodell's record in the short time that I had, both as a member of Congress and as a party man. And I've been impressed by the quality and number of bills that he, as author and co-author, or co-author, had filed in the House. Two bills at North Morty for anticipating problems which then were just showing signs of becoming serious national problems. These are the Anti-Bullying Act of 2013, which makes it the responsibility of elementary and secondary schools in the Philippines to address problems of bullying among their students and adopt measures and policies to prevent bullying. The other one is Republic Act 10174, which amends the Climate Change Act of 2009 by creating a Climate Change Commission to enable the government to cope with environmental problems and other risks through risk reduction, through risk reduction and management. How ironic indeed that as he lay in state, a fierce typhoon was ravaging the Bicol regions, even as on video going viral were pictures of school bullying in a boys' high school. Two years ago, the UP Alumni Association, taking note of Rodell's record as a party list representative, conferred on him the Distinguished Alumni Award in public service and good governance. 
As a result of the case we filed in the Supreme Court, Rodell's family and mine became personal friends. Our bond, nourished by Rodell's thoughtfulness in sending over to the house that famous vehicle delicacy called lying wherever, whenever he came from the province. As our friendship grew, I came to know Rodell better. I would give the credit to Rodell, for Rodell had a gift of friendship. He was a loving husband and a caring father. Jerty, his wife, he called wifey and mother, and described her as the only girl in the family who happens to be our yaya, secretary, travel coordinator, nurse, part-time cook, part-time driver, and moral compass, a man who gives his wife with a message spangled with such lovely praises must truly be in love with his wife. In his Facebook account, Rodell wrote about a tradition in his family in which at the advent of Christmas, everyone pitch in to put up the Christmas tree and decorate the house. The two boys were to be in charge of placing angels and a star at the top of the tree as it was quite tall. If these items weren't there, he wrote, it would be known that they did not come home. Fortunately, he continued, that had not happened. Here is a man who loved his family, who set a great store by tradition. The fiddler on the roof, who said tradition, kept him from falling. Here was a good man, a faithful public servant. Why should anyone want to harm him or to have such a man harmed? Why cannot we have men like him, especially in a time like this? The words of Josiah Gilbert Hallen speak to our yearnings. With these words, I will conclude. God, give us man. A time like this demands strong minds, great hearts, true faith, and ready hands. Men who have honor Men who will not lie, tall men, sun-crowned, who live above the fog in public duty and in private thinking.